We first began to be involved with uh, mission work in Belize back in the early 2000s, I'm thinking 2003, 2004, with medical mission trips down to Belize. And then when the Diocese of Belize wanted to start a school in San Pedro, uh, we were contacted to help them do that in the summer of 2005, I believe. Several people told me I should get in touch with Frances um, Wilson in Belize because she knew everything about Belize. It would be a perfect place to go. And they started to see that on the island there were a lot of children not in school and they were primarily from this one neighborhood. And so they thought that they would build a resort on the island and with the money from the resort, the proceeds from the resort. They would build a water treatment plant for the neighborhood of San Mateo, and then they would build an Anglican church, and then they would build a school. Um, when they began to present their plans, the mayor at the time said, what we really need is a school. And so they began fundraising. So that began Holy Cross, and that began our relationship with the school. When the school started, they just barely had three rooms and nothing in it. I mean, no furniture, no textbooks. They had kids, teachers, and three rooms on stilts over water. With kids, you know, at risk for literally falling out of the classroom into the swamp. The, the growth of the school has been uh, it's kind of like saying wildfire growing. I mean, it, you don't really control some things. You just think you do. The school started with about 90 children. And I think by January had about 120, 130 kids. They, they just keep coming in. Uh, and they were constantly adding classrooms as, as the kids came in adding uh, and building uh, new facilities. They were just barely ahead of the uh, wave of children as they came in. But one of the kind of funniest uh, examples of how they grew was Francis and Vernon, the missionaries at the school, were hard working and decided to take a long overdue vacation. They, were, they left for about a week to go relax and fish on their boat. And they told everybody, the teachers and the principal and the staff, uh, to um, enroll the same number of kids for next school year. When they got back a week later, what they found out is that they enrolled uh, 200 kids in their absence, but that they had not re-enrolled the 200 kids that were already in the school. And so overnight, they doubled. The feeding program uh, at Holy Cross has been a real ministry from the beginning. Uh, and the school from day one provided them breakfast, uh, snack, some sort of a fruit, fruit uh, snack, a uh, hot, protein-rich uh, lunch, and they did this uh, five days a week, and at no cost to the children. The cost to do that in the beginning was $5 per child per week. If you multiply 500 kids times a dollar a day, that's $500 a day times five days a week. That's $2,500 a week. And you can see that what's very inexpensive for one child, a dollar a day, for a whole lot of kids, for a whole lot of months, it gets to be pretty expensive. So there's a huge need to support the feeding ministry because So many of our kids that uh, finish their studies at Holy Cross, many of them don't get into uh, high school. Many of them don't. But those that are able to uh, get into high school then have to face the daunting task of how is it going to get paid for. High school is not free in Belize. High education goes from kindergarten through eighth grade. 
it's on the British system, so they have a little bit different, but it's the equivalent number of years. The cost for a year's worth of high school in Belize is on the order of six to seven hundred dollars a year. Uh, a very small amount of money for Americans, but for a, a poor family in Belize, something that's out of their reach. The children that go to our school come for the most part from the poorest neighborhood in all of Belize. It's called San Mateo, St. Matthew. San Mateo is a um, small area of land on the island that was uh, land that was donated to people in exchange for a vote. And it was promised that if they voted for this person, you would receive land and eventually they would put in electricity and water. So many, many, many poor people took advantage of this promise and started living out there literally on sticks in the swamp. Families live in little, um, or some larger homes and they're built out of plywood and there's they use seagrass and seaweed for fill underneath the houses. And as many as a dozen people might live in a room the size of most of our bedrooms, or even not that big. About five years ago, a group of students from the University of Mississippi came down and started a project to build roads in San Mateo. The only roads they had in there prior to that were called London Bridges, and they were a series of wooden planks that were put over water, and put over a big, in one area, sinkhole that no one knows how deep it is, and it just haphazardly these planks were put in, and people, you'd see people with wheelbarrows or bicycles. The group from Mississippi came in and started with the community a building project to build roads, wider roads, so that two, like uh, maybe two golf carts could go by, or more than one bicycle, um, and maybe even a truck. It was, the community was thrilled. They helped bring in sand from their uh, neighborhood and rocks and shells. And um, the mayor, has spearheaded a move to get electricity and running water in the island, uh, in that part of the island. So now almost everyone in there has, will if they don't have it, will have access to running water and uh, electricity. Over the years, the uh, uh, the building of the facility has included things like uh, pretty much a state of the art computer lab. The computer lab is also one of the few computer labs in a lower grade school in the whole country. We started out with 25 donated Dell com desktop computers. The children, they have a computer teacher, Mr. Aaron, who is dedicated to teaching, keeping the computers up to date, and teaching computer skills. So I think updating the computer class has been a big boost to the students. Another large improvement was the libra library at the school, which uh, in no small way uh, was made possible by one of our parishioners, Hollis Kent, and, uh, and her college roommate. The library is one of the largest school libraries in the country of Belize for um, lower education. For those charged with nurturing and growing the school, the big challenge has been, is, and will continue to be what you'd call sustainability. And so, one of the most important things for the school is uh, for the board to continue to look at uh, enrollment management, uh, to try 
it's best not to outgrow its ability to su support this number of students it has. Right now there are 400 and say 425 students and it will probably stay about that um, number of students for the time being.